Hey everyone, my name is Julian, and I'm so excited to finally be announcing the release of Plugin Station, my audio plugin management app for macOS. For the last five years, I've worked in technical support at an audio plugin company, and during that time, I've helped everybody from complete beginners to bedroom producers to Grammy award-winning engineers, and if one thing's for sure, it's that the industry sure needs one piece of software to unify all of the plugins installed on their systems and get help with them when they need it. After a year and a half of developing Plugin Station all by myself, I'm really proud to be able to say that I really believe that Plugin Station is that one piece of software that the industry needs. Plugin Station includes all kinds of awesome features that I'm going to cover over the course of this video, some of which are generating technical support emails to plugin manufacturers for you whenever you run into an issue. Know that it's not an AI feature. You can also filter our plugin database based on all kinds of criteria, like whether or not a plugin requires an iLock license. If you're shopping for a plugin, the app will search the internet for you to query all plugin dealers and find the best deal. You'll also receive system warnings for all kinds of things like out-of-date plugins and out-of-date iLock license manager version. Yes, that can cause all kinds of problems. And we'll even let you know if you have plugin files installed in your computer that you don't need. That's enough talking. How about I show you how it works? So this is what the app is going to look like after you finish scanning all your installed plugins in your installed DAWs during onboarding. Up at the top of corner, you're going to see system profile, Julian's MacBook Pro. That's the system profile that I'm currently using. Every computer that you use with Plugin Station requires its own system profile. So if we go onto Julian's MacBook Pro here, we're gonna see that we're gonna be able to look at about. So this is all kinds of different information about my computer. We also have an option to edit the nickname for the system profile. We can save a state for it, more on that later. We can share it with another Plugin Station user. So we can go in here, enter their username, and they will be able to compare the installed plugins on their system with the installed plugins on the system that is being shared with them. We also have edit sharing preferences. So if I share something with somebody and I want to stop sharing it with them, that's where I would go to do that. Now let's move on to the installed plugins section. So if I click installed plugins here, we're going to see all of the plugins that Plugin Station found installed on the computer. So if I uh, click on Adams by BB Audio, for example, I'm gonna see a screenshot of the plugin, I'm gonna see a description of it, and I'm gonna see all kinds of data about it, how much space it's taking up, the macOS versions it supports, what formats are installed, the installed version, all kinds of different options for purchasing it. Is it included in a subscription, a bundle, a perpetual license? Is it only included in a subscription and can you not buy it perpetually? You can also uh, view the plugin's product page, get support for it, visit the manufacturer's website, show it in Finder, share it with another Plugin Station user, or uninstall it. What I do want to show off while we're here is get support. This screen is basically going to walk you through, depending on the issue that you're having, different options for troubleshooting the issue that you're having with your plugin. Let's say the plugin's not appearing in your DAW. We just want to check, have you run the official installer for the plugin? So let's say, yes, I have. And then I just have a bunch of DAWs installed on this computer. So it's asking me to select the DAW I'm experiencing issues with. So let's say it's Pro Tools. I actually get steps right here to rescan the plugins listed in Pro Tools. No more Googling, how do you rescan plugins in Pro Tools and having to search through the search results and all that kind of stuff. All of it's for you right here. So let's say this didn't work. I tried all of it. The plugin still didn't show up in my DAW. It knows what plugin I clicked on. So it tracks that it's Adams and then I told it that it's having issues in Pro Tools. We can say, no matter what I do, the plugin isn't showing up. Obviously you should have a better description than that, but let's generate that message. We see a message generated over here. This section of the app is not just a chat GPT wrapper. It's not AI anything. This is me taking the data that you've indicated over here and formatting it in a way that I would love to receive all of my emails and technical support. This is going to reduce the back and forth you have with technical support. This is going to get your issues uh, resolved faster than ever. We're going to copy to our clipboard. Uh, and then we can open the manufacturer support page. So now we're on the baby audio support page and then boom, I just paste the message in right there. And I got a nice comprehensive technical support message that is much more likely to get my issue resolved in one message than if you just said the plugin's not showing up and then you have to provide all kinds of information as you go back and forth. Now, another really awesome section is the browse plugins section. So this is where you can view all of the plugins in the entire plugin station database. And this is a list that is ever growing. And actually the way that it works is if you were to install the app and then 
scan plugins that aren't in this database, I get a notification that that happened and then we just add it to the database right away. Basically the exact same thing happens if let's say for this plugin, the latest version is listed as 7.2.35 and a user installs version 7.2.40. I'm gonna get a notification that says, it looks like the latest version is actually 7.2.40. You should update that in the database. I'm gonna do that. And then everybody who has an older version than 7.2.40 is gonna get notified so that they can update to the latest version of the plugin. What I really love and what I know that a lot of other people are gonna love as well, is that if you go into this filter menu up here, we can filter based on all kinds of different criteria. So we can say, I know that I want an EQ plugin and I definitely want an EQ plugin that does not require an iLock authorization. It's important to me that I can try it first and I don't want a subscription. So let's do available as perpetual license. At the moment, that's all the EQ plugins that are gonna show up that meet that criteria. As far as I know, there is nowhere else on the internet that you can do that. I think this is a really powerful tool when you're shopping for something. Something else that's really cool is uh, you can see if a plugin is free. If a plugin is discontinued and it has not been replaced by another plugin, you'll get a big red X. If a plugin is superseded, let's say Autotune Realtime, I'll see superseded by Autotune Realtime X and I'll know I don't wanna buy this plugin or rather I can't really buy this plugin anymore. So I should go to this page and see the latest version that I can buy. This next feature I wanna show off is not only gonna save you time, but it's also gonna save you some money. Let's say we want to buy a Rouser by Empirical Labs. It's a compressor plugin. I'm going to go to find best price. And the app just searched the internet for prices on the plugin across all plugin dealers. So we checked out Sweetwater, we have professional audio design, and we have full compass systems. If we wanna take that deal, we can go and view and browser, click on visit site. And just like that, we're at the Sweetwater page that is going to allow us to save some money than we would have if we had just come across those other listings that are $50 more expensive. Next up is system profile sharing. So I already briefly mentioned that with going up here and clicking share to share your system profile with another user. But what happens when somebody shares a system profile with you? What can you actually do with it? I'm gonna go into compare system profiles. Let's say the person that shared the system profile with me is coming to my studio for a session. And I wanna make sure that uh, whatever session they send me, I'm gonna be up to date with whatever plugin versions they have installed, with the plugins that they have installed so that there's no issues when I actually try to open the session. So I'm gonna go ahead and compare my system profiles. I have all of these plugins that are perfectly synced. I can also see uh, that on my version, on my computer, uh, current computer, I have a 1.4.4 VST3 version but on theirs, they have 1.0.4. That's definitely valuable information, uh, especially if let's say they were using the VST3 version in a session, for example, and you only have the AU version installed, you're gonna have some problems there. You're gonna wanna get the VST3 version. So it would also tell you about that as well. And then it looks like there are no mismatched plugins, i.e. a plugin that is installed on one computer that is just not installed in any form on the other computer. The next feature I wanna talk about is Storage Manager. This is where you're gonna to go to make sure you're getting the very most out of the hard drive space on your computer. So right at the top here, we have a graph that shows us an overview of the storage on our computer and how we're using it with our plugins and our DAWs. We can also see our top three largest plugins installed. If we click see all, we can see all of our installed plugins sorted by biggest to smallest. And if we scroll down more, we see graphs for storage usage by plugin format, by type, by manufacturer and by DAW. This section of the app goes hand in hand really nicely with a few different system warnings that you'll see in the system warnings tab. So if I go in here myself, I see that I have 1.18 gigabytes of unneeded AAX files installed. Now, what exactly does that mean? If you don't know, AAX plugin files are files that can only be loaded in Pro Tools. So if I don't have Pro Tools installed, which I don't on this computer, 
that means that I really don't have a use for any AAX plugin files. So I'm just gonna go down and delete files, click continue, and just like that, I have a finder window with all of my AAX plugin files highlighted, and I can go ahead and delete these and save a whole gig on my computer. Let's talk about some other system warnings that you might see in the system warning section of the app. In this case, I can see that three plugins are out of date on my computer. It looks like Stutter Edit 2 by Isotope should be version 2.1.0, but it's actually 2.0.0. And then I also see that Transit 2 by Baby Audio and MPC Compressor by Harrison Audio are out of date as well. Now let's say I wanted to update this Starter Edit 2 plugin to the latest version. In the database, I actually have all of the installation managers that any of the manufacturers in the database use. So for example, with Isotope, they have the Isotope product portal. So if the Isotope product portal is installed on my computer, which in this case it is, I'll get an option to launch it. So I'm just gonna click that and open it up. And it's prompting me to sign in with my Isotope account, uh, which I'm not gonna do right now. But the point is it takes you right to the app that you need to use in order to update. I know what you're thinking. What if a manufacturer doesn't have an installation manager like Isotope Product Portal? Well, we can see that with Baby Audio, we get the option to just open up the Baby Audio downloads page. We click on there and we can scroll down and we're taken to the page that has all of Baby Audio's installers. There's a third edge case too, where a plugin manufacturer can offer their plugins through other manufacturers. So in the case of Harrison Audio, you can actually subscribe to Harrison Audio plugins uh, and buy them from a few different places. You can get them from Slate Digital, you can get them from Solid State Logic or SSL, or you can get them directly from Harrison Audio. Now, uh, it asks you specifically, where did you get these plugins from? We want to know so that we can determine uh, what the best way for you to get the latest version is. So if you got them from Harrison Audio, we're going to go ahead and let you update via the Harrison plugin downloads page. If you got them from Solid State Logic or SSL, we're going to open the SSL download manager. If you got them from Slate Digital, let's open Slate Digital Connect. If, let's say, uh, Slate Digital was selected and Slate Digital Connect was not installed, it would just take you to the page to install Slate Digital Connect so that you could use it that way. Another warning that we're seeing here is that four plugins are superseded. I touched on this before, but a superseded plugin is basically one that's been replaced by another plugin. So in this case, we're seeing that I have FabFilter Pro-Q3 installed which has been superseded by Pro-Q4. So if we wanna upgrade to the latest version, we just click here and we can go to the product page for the latest version. I'm not seeing any other system warnings right now, but some others that it would detect if necessary are iLock License Manager version. So my database keeps track of uh, what the latest version is. And if you have a version installed that's earlier than that, it's gonna tell you because that can definitely cause problems. Uh, we see equivalent VST, VST3, and AU unneeded file warnings here that are not showing up because we have DAWs installed that can run all those plugin formats. And then uh, we check for duplicate plugin files. So let's say you have the same Soothe2 VST3 file installed in two different places on your computer. We would get, we would see a, a notification about that because that's an opportunity for you to free up a little bit of space by not having the same plugin installed in multiple places. We also have system profile states. So let's say uh, I am getting a new computer and I want to obviously install all of my plugins on my new computer. If you're anything like me, you have a lot of plugins and that can take a really long time. You could spend, I, I think I've spent, I don't know, like three full days just installing things. And it's really painful because you get to a place where you think you've installed everything, but then you realize, oh, I forgot this plugin. And then you get started on a session and then you're like, oh, I was in a flow and now I have to go get that plugin because I want to use it, but it's not installed. So this helps you out with that significantly by allowing you to create a system profile state. So let's create a system profile state. We basically just made it so that we could view all of the plugins that were installed at the time that the system profile state was created. So by default in this screen, when we select the system profile state, we see what macOS version was running at its cre at the time of its creation, when it was created, the name of the system profile. And by default, uh, we only show plugins not installed on the system profile. And the reason for that is because if you're going here, the assumption is that uh, you're, you're trying to cross-reference 
what was installed versus what is currently installed. And if they're exactly the same, there's nothing for you to see. But if you decide that you wanna see everything, you can see uh, everything that was installed before uh, on that on that system profile state. Now let's say just for the sake of this demo that all of these plugins were installed on my old computer, but on my current computer, they're not installed. What do I do? I wanna, I wanna install them. So luckily we can just confirm our selection here. And just like that, we're taken to a page that shows all of the manufacturers that were selected before and all the plugins that were selected as well. And it gives us the ability to very easily just go to the individual downloads page of each manufacturer's website and get the installers that we need. So let's say I need FabFilter, okay? I'm gonna open up the FabFilter downloads page. I needed the uh, Pro G, Pro, FabFilter Pro L2, Pro Q3, Pro Q4, and R2. So I could just go find those individually and download them and run them and FabFilter's taken care of. One of the last features I'm gonna talk about is iLock RMA Assistant. Let's say you have an iLock dongle and you lose it or it's broken or it's stolen. But on that dongle, you had tons of plugin licenses from tons of different plugin manufacturers. What you now have to do is you have to go and contact every single individual manufacturer that had a license on that dongle and get them to send you a replacement which can be, if you have a lot of licenses, uh, really time consuming and annoying, and you're not gonna wanna do that. When you submit your RMA for your lost, broken, or stolen iLock dongle, you do that through Pace, uh, the company that makes iLock. And when you do that, they're gonna give you an RMA number. So you're gonna enter that here. Let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're gonna enter your iLock user ID. And then you're gonna submit. So what just happened? The app just checked your account for every single plugin that supports any generation iLock dongle. So it's basically saying you have all of these plugins on your account. They all could be on your iLock dongle, which ones were actually on it. So let's say I had the Isotope one and I had all the Sound Toys plugins and I had all of the Sonable plugins. I'm gonna go here and then do confirm plugin selection. On this final page of the iLock RMA Assistant, we have all of our manufacturers for all of the plugins that we selected on the previous page. And for each of these manufacturers, we have an automatically generated message to send to each of those manufacturers so that we don't have to manually write out, I need new licenses for this plugin and this plugin and this plugin and this plugin. We can very clearly say, this is what was on my iLock. This is what I need. Please give me replacement licenses. So we do the same thing that we did in the support email generator. We can say create email and mail app. So it just opened up a new email with all of the information that I need to send to the technical support for that manufacturer with that email that I need to send it to. So this is ready for me to send right away. So we can do that. If a manufacturer does not have an email address and you have to go on their support page and submit a form or something like that, we can open that up here and then we go to submit a request and then we paste the message in right here and then boom, we're all done. Or if you want, you can copy the message to your clipboard, send it in whatever email client you want, or you can view the generated message beforehand right here. The last feature that I wanna show off before ending this video is opening plugin files within plugin station. So let's say you're in your finder window and you're looking through your plugin folders and you come across something that you didn't realize you had installed that's just kind of been sitting on your computer. You're like, what even is that for? I don't know that I need that. I, I kind of want to delete it, but I'm also afraid that it's relevant to something that I actually need. All you have to do is right click it, go to open with, and then go to plugin station. And just like that, the app will show you a window um, representing the plugin that you just opened. So we see, oh, that's soft tube tape, because who knows, like it just says tape. I don't know who, I don't know whose plugin that is. I wanna make sure I actually know what it is. Right click, open with plugin station, and we get a window that shows us 
all about the plugin, and that's Plugin Station. Subscriptions start as low as $4.99 a month, and every plan comes with a seven day free trial to make sure you enjoy it before you come in. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to support at julianmichaeltechnologies.com, and you can download the app free of charge today at pluginstation.app. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I've been working on this app for almost a year and a half, and it's the most work I've ever put into a singular project. I'm so excited that it's finally out there, and I cannot wait to hear your feedback. Be sure to subscribe down below to stay up to date on everything Plugin Station, and I will see you next time.